Hey everyone, and welcome to a special uh, Talking Islam episode where we have Nina with us from Australia. Okay. Hi, I'm Daniel. <laughs> nice to be here. How are you today? Yeah, feeling good. And how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. So, yes, um, what prompted this episode was really, and we'll talk maybe a little bit about this later, was you wrote some super helpful, insightful comments on uh, Insomnia Insight number 337. Uh, everybody can check that out. It's really, really a nice conversation between you and another member of the community. Uh, so that's why I thought I have to invite Nina. So I'm so glad you joined. But this said, um, I like to start asking, like, how, how did you find uh, the channel? Yeah, so I struggled with insomnia about a year ago, and I've tried so many things. And then I um, I came across this program where it helped you. It was not really CBT, uh, but it helped you to control your thoughts um, around sleep. And I was doing that, but still I was struggling because I didn't really understand, you know, the full picture. Didn't really know insomnia for what it was. And then I was in touch. I was obsessively uh, in touch with all of the community members. I was just, you know, chatting with them, how they're going or if it's helping them. And one of them sent me a link to your channel. And uh, yeah, I started watching videos. At first I was <laughs> angry when I found out that you have to do nothing <laughs> to beat insomnia. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is nonsense. But I kept watching because I could see comments and success stories, but it didn't make sense at first. Uh, but then um, the more I watched, um, it, it just really resonated with me, you know, the, the, the approach, because it sounded a lot like something that I did without knowing in the past when I did beat insomnia just intuitively, um, very short periods of insomnia, but I always overcame it just by doing everything you said in the channel. And the more I watched, the more I, I understood it. So yeah, so it's, that was about uh, maybe eight or nine months ago when, yeah, I started watching your videos. Yeah. Right here. Oh, so interesting. So, so somebody tipped you off about the channel and uh, that now I have to just share something more for anyone who's tuning in here, which is that I've, I've heard this more and more lately that somebody heard on a Facebook group or Reddit or something like that. So I just want to say thank you for everyone out there who's spreading the word. It's so helpful. But yeah, that said, tell us. So um, it sounded like you had a, a kind of episodes of insomnia in the, in the in kind of earlier, but they were sort of shorter and you got past them, but then there was a bigger one. But yeah, tell us what uh, the whole story really of uh, what happened. Yeah, so I've, just to give you an idea, I've always been this really, really good sleeper. I slept, if, you, if I didn't set an alarm, I'd sleep for 10, 11 hours continuously, sleep through the noise, sleep through the stress, sleep through anything my whole life. <laughs> So that was that was shocking to you know to have insomnia, um, uh, but yeah, I had really brief episodes of bad sleep, which is absolutely normal, uh, which was also really unusual for me. Um, after maybe like my whole my whole life has been great, and then I had a wedding. Of course, there's a lot of stress around the wedding, and then for around one or two weeks, I had like I couldn't fall asleep for an hour. I was waking up early, but I just you know I had no idea what it was. I didn't question it. I was just oblivious to everything. I had no idea it was anxiety. It was, you know, I just didn't know anything about sleep or insomnia. So I just ignored it. And I thought, oh, yeah, it'll come back to normal soon at some point. I just didn't question anything. And of course, right after the wedding, it gets back to normal and I sleep like a baby again. And then I never, never even remembered that episode of bad sleep. It didn't, didn't come to mind. So just just complete ignore and just no reaction, no nothing. And yeah, and it was back to normal for two years. And um, so that, uh, and so that, sorry, that the wedding was like three years ago, something like that. Yeah. More than three years ago. Yeah. Okay. A bit over three years ago. And then the second episode was um, when I moved to Australia because I'm from Europe originally. So that was a big stress to move here. And also of course you yeah, couldn't fall asleep for a little bit, but that's when I started getting annoyed with it. And I started, I had more time um, when I moved. I, I didn't work as much back then. So I had more time on my hands to question things and put, pay attention to things. And then I was just getting annoyed with it. And I started to um, anticipate bad nights based on what I had, you know, yesterday or a week ago. So it was more in my mind. And then I bought this um, flower essence that's supposed to raise your, like, frequency or vibration of the body or something and then I thought it was helping me <laughs> and so I started sleeping better and then um, I started to change my reactions as well I, I'd wake up early in the morning uh, 
And then at first I'd get annoyed for, I don't know, the first week I was just getting annoyed with it. And then I thought, you know what, why am I getting annoyed? I'm just going to lie here and visualize. I really like to, you know, visualize things like traveling or something nice. So I just would do that, but no more questions asked. Like no what ifs. Oh, I'll visualize so I can fall asleep or I'll visualize so that I can kill anxiety. It was just, I am just going to relax and visualize. And I did that without any what ifs. And so I would fall back to sleep every time. <laughs> uh, and that, But I didn't care. I was just visualizing. So and after a week, it was gone. After a week, it was gone. And I completely moved on. Didn't ask any more questions. Didn't do anything. And so it was gone for a long time. And then the lockdown came, um, which is probably what, you know, brought a lot of people to you <laughs> that, that are, yeah, turning point. And, yeah, lost everything. Lost work. Lost hobbies, outgoings. Absolutely everything. Um, and just spent all the time at home. And my husband was working outside all the time. So he was, you know, you know what it's like when it's just complete loneliness. Um, and uh, yeah, started having trouble with falling asleep, I think because of some crippling depression or something. So of course it, it, it affected me. Um, yeah, couldn't fall asleep and then sort of ignored it. But then I started having sleep efforts like, oh, I'm just going to go for this long walk so I can definitely fall asleep tonight, you know? And I started think making, you know, this really subtle efforts trying to control um, sleep. And then it was subtle, and then there was subtle fear, but it was all in the background. And then came the night when I just slept for, like, I don't know, three hours, and that was shocking to me because in my whole life I have never, ever slept three hours. Um, I fell asleep at 5 a.m., uh, so it's also something I've never ever before experienced. And then, yeah, I felt falling asleep at 5 a.m., being up all night. It was just so shocking. I just couldn't understand what was going on, you know, the, just not having knowledge of why it's happening. It was just so scary, not having an idea. And then a week later, it happened again. And then sometime after that, it was zero sleep. It was just a sleepless night. And it was just intense fear of what the hell is going on. <laughs> it was just so, so like, I have never in my life been so scared, you know, of, of that. <laughs> I'm laughing at it now. It sounds like another person <laughs> and not me. But, um, yeah, it was really, really fearful. And, I've, of course, right away I tried the pills and then I, I stayed awake even though I had the pills. So it was even more scary. And then one thing after another, I go to a doctor um, and she gives me, yeah, she's like, oh, it's, you have gut issues, take this, or you have low iron, take this, you know. And, of course, it was helpful for general health. <laughs> it was good to know, but it has nothing to do with sleep. I've had, you know, all kinds of things before. We all have, you know, some, some health issues from time to time, but we sleep if we're normal sleepers because it doesn't impact it, you know, impact the sleep in any way. But I believed it, and I was so excited that, you know, finally she's going to fix me, she's going to help me. And then I started sleeping a little bit better, but the fear was always in the background, that mysterious sleepless night, whatever it was, whatever caused it. I was so scared that it would come back. And of course it came back. Of course it came back again. Uh, but I, I knew that pills were helping me somehow. So I thought, no, that's okay. It's just one night. These pills are helping me. I'm, I'm getting better progressively. It's a process. And then I was still, yeah, still struggled all the time. And it was a lot, it was on my mind. Like I would wake up and, thought, okay, pills, what else can help me? And I would just research crazy, research a lot on techniques, meditations, um, all kinds of, you know, all kinds of things, literally everything. I visited maybe, I don't know, 50 pages on Google, you know, in the search. Um, and then funny thing, we moved houses and um, I was so busy unpacking and moving that although I slept a little, I just didn't care. I had lots of stuff to do. Um, and I just pushed through the fatigue. It was really tiring. But when you move around, even if you slept a little, you feel fine somehow. So because I was moving around so much and having two coffees a day, I didn't feel the fatigue. So I'm like, oh, I don't care if I'm tired. I can still do things. And, and then I was so busy. I didn't have any time to question or predict sleep, or bad sleep or question anything or doubt anything. So and I was just exhausted by, 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 you know, by the end of the day. So I just, I didn't care if I slept. I just wanted to go and just relax. I was just, I couldn't stand on my feet, you know, 10 hours of like unpacking or doing all those things. 
And I started sleeping really well because I was exhausted. I woke up early, didn't think about it. <laughs> and then it started getting a little bit better and then better and better. And I thought, this is it. I think I think I fixed sleep. And then I would tell my husband, and, and he's uh, just to give you an idea, my husband is the kind of person who's just always happy. He doesn't care. He doesn't think about things, doesn't overanalyze. And he always, even before, even when everything started, he told me, Oh, I just don't care. Just don't think about it. I'm like, no, no, this is not a solution. You don't get it. This is serious. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> and I wanted to believe it was serious. He's like, oh, I just don't think about it. Just don't care. You slept fine before because you didn't think about it. Just leave it. Just leave it. And then, yeah, when I told him that, oh, yeah, my my, my, my sleep is fixed, um, you know, he's like, good. Now just move on. Now just forget <laughs> about it. I'm like, no. No, I'm not, I can't move on. I just couldn't move on. It was still there. It was so fearful. It was strange. It was weird. It was mysterious and scary. And it was unresolved, always in the background, always there. And of course, after we, we finished all of the unpacking, finished all of the housework, uh, weeks later, yeah, comes another night when I can't fall asleep. But right away, I think, oh, no, I hope it's not insomnia again. And because, and I start analyzing why I couldn't fall asleep. I'm like, could it be because of these thoughts? Could it be because of this mood today? Maybe I need to have more fulfillment in life. You know, maybe I need to do this. And I start analyzing my life. I think it has something to do with that. Um, and all just so many thoughts around, around sleep. And I had another sleepless night, but that time was a lot worse than all the previous periods of insomnia. I just started, I just thought, you know, nothing helped those pills didn't help even this moving thing didn't help this is back and it's back for good and it's really really scary and i can't live with it it's horrible and right away it was just just complete obsession it was something like in my whole life i've never been so obsessed about anything like this before and oh uh, it was just horrible my whole day like hours hours and hours every day i would be thinking about it talking about it and then I had a sleepless night. And after that sleepless night, I had another sleepless night. And I had like two up to like, I knew it was sleepless because I was like wide awake. Like my heart was racing and I was just in fear. It was just dread dreading fear. Like, you know, like Armageddon is coming kind of fear. Like just, I'm going to die. And uh, yeah, and that was really scary. And then I thought, you know, it can't be, it can't be going on like this. I really have to fix it. I just don't know what else to do. And I've been getting this these ads about the program uh, on the internet that's supposed to fix you. And it's a lot about controlling thoughts, controlling um, our response. And there were meditations to sort of, um, you know, program you that you are a good sleeper. So it was partly helpful and it was really expensive. And I decided, I don't care. I'm just going to buy it. And one of the big things in that program was thought detachment so every time any thought about sleep um, came in no matter how bad it is i had just had to detach and just let go and i started doing that and of course i had horrible anxiety at first i i was just wide awake all the time but i kept on detaching and i realized that there is probably one or two million thoughts about sleep per day <laughs> in my head i kept on detaching 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 but, you know, it doesn't really work because you keep on detaching, but the fear is still there. So you really have to address the root cause. Thoughts is just the result of, I don't know, this deep subconscious, um, I don't know, programming fear or whatever it is. So I kept on detaching and then it started getting better and it got a lot better and I started sleeping quite well. But still, it was this mysterious, weird thing that I just didn't know what it was. And... Uh, yeah, so I w it just still le left me in wonder. I was just wondering, you know, if if I could be normal ever again, or if I could just completely get back to normal. Because I still it wasn't perfect the sleep, but um, I was just yeah, I was just really confused at that point. Yeah. And, and uh, so far, like this this um, you know from the lockdown started happening until where we are now in the story how, how long of a time period is this um i think it's been one year now yeah oh really that's been yeah a year then. yeah wow. and then and then what happened 
Uh, yeah, and so and then I found found your channel, and uh, yeah, I had uh, a strange reaction at first. I was annoyed because you know when you try so much and someone tells you just do nothing, it's like oh what what the hell you know I'm, you don't get it. It's a real struggle, and I'm doing a lot. You can't. It's and it's not something I can fix with doing nothing. And then, you know, my husband's words were lingering in my head and I should have believed him because he is the kind of person who just never, ever suffers. He is just like, whatever's going on outside, of course, there's problems, but he has this amazing mental stamina, like nothing can get to him, nothing, just nothing. He's just always happy. And I should have just listened to him. He was right. I should have just done nothing. And yeah, and I started watching your videos and especially the, you know, the success stories. Um, and I started to make sense, you know, that, yeah, we can't control sleep. I started thinking about my past that, you know, I never did anything to fall asleep and never, I just never thought about it and I slept fine. So could it be the way out of this hell? Or could it be the way? And I, I got so excited um, and then I bought your set it and forget it book. And that was, that was huge. I just devoured it, um, I made heaps of notes. And what helped me a lot was, um, um, it just ruined all of those myths and wrong ideas I had about sleep. Um, especially the gas, gas and the break model. And right away, this whole idea that sleep is so complicated and we have to do this and we have to do that and it's hard to control and there's many factors that influence sleep right away was ruined so i understood that basically you have to wake up you know face the sun start the day you know live your day and then get really sleepy and then go to bed and allow the body to switch off that's it there is no nothing else to it you you're awake and then you sleep and you're awake and then you sleep and the only thing that gets in the way is when you push on that break you know, you have a strong sleep drive, you know, the body's pressing on gas, the, the body the body wants to sleep, it craves it. But then the only thing that gets in the way is break and break is anxiety about sleep. And I thought, wow, that is literally the only thing that's in the way of the sleep, on the whole falling asleep process. It's just anxiety. So what if I remove anxiety? Then the drive is there. So why, why would I not sleep if there is no anxiety? And it was just so simple. I just understood everything right away, everything I was doing wrong. And I kept on reading about, you know, it was just so helpful. Uh, I just had this clear idea of what sleep was and of what, uh, and what I had to do. So that was a huge breakthrough for me. So nice, so nice to hear, oh my God, goodness. Uh, you know, when, uh, when you do something like, you know, when I wrote, wrote the book, I was of course hoping that this would, uh, be clear and resonate and just hearing that like you yeah. know everything suddenly made sense from that gas and brake model it's it's so amazing to hear that so glad and and by the way before we actually kind of move forward was it that um, I'm curious about this one because I'm sure a lot of people had the same reaction when they found the channel that at first it's kind of some somewhat annoying some maybe disappointment like what that's that's it now did you kind of like stop watching and then go back or did you did you still kind of feel like you know there's something here and you kind of kept watching. Yeah, I think as I said, success stories really, really helped. Um, just seeing that people, yeah, people really overcame it for good and they just completely got back to normal. Um, and it was effortless as well. You know, it wasn't complicated and it just made sense. Like a lot, a lot of the times um, in life, a lot of big solutions to big problems are quite simple. I don't know, even it's just sometimes it's just so simple. Like the truth, the truth has to be simple. Otherwise, it's not the truth, you know. It, it just has to be, yeah, I believe it that. has to click for you. It's like, it just clicks for you and you get it. And there's no way, and there's no going back. So it just, I don't know, just the simplicity of it. And it started to make sense because I remembered the norm, the me from the past who was a normal sleeper. And I started, you know, analyzing that, you know what? I actually was doing all of these things without knowing. I, I was oblivious to um, the process of falling asleep. I knew nothing about it. If there was any slight anxiety, I didn't label it with anxiety. I didn't know what it was. I thought, oh, maybe I had you know, too much wine. That's why my heart is racing. Or maybe I don't know what it is. It was no, I didn't question it. I just like, oh yeah, it'll pass soon. And sure yeah. enough, half an hour, an hour, it would pass. I fall asleep and then I forget I ever had it. So it was just, 
it was the doing of all of that from your videos that I was doing in the past and then just, um, yeah, how people, you know, overcame it by doing that. And then, um, yeah, just kept on watching about hype Nick, um, hype Nick jokes and hype, uh, and, yeah. um, yeah, you know, awareness. yeah. Yeah. And hype Nick awareness and how I also, I had something like that in the past as well. Like I would wake, my, I would wake myself back to, um, to, to awakeness, um, awareness, because I was maybe stressed at work, but I'm like, oh, what was that? I get back to sleep, you know? So I didn't react to it. It was just the, basically the more I watched, the more I realized it's the doing of nothing. It's thinking nothing. It's not reacting in any way. It's just complete nothingness. There is nothing there. Even insomnia in itself is not really a, a problem. It's something we, we made up in our minds and we label it as a, pro, as a problem. There's no real thing out there. Um, and uh, reminds me of the yeah your interview with um, Sasha Stevens. I was thinking about that myself yeah. exactly <laughs> because I read I read her books as well, and that actually helped a lot as well. Um, the the effortless sleep method. Uh, it was more general, but uh, I think the bedtime bedtime stories, stories from from me, just really good insight um, about life as well, not just sleep. And and so I started doing all of that. I actually also what helped me was that your chapter about, you know, looking forward to um, to your time around going to bed to, to watch your favorite shows. Cause I had a, like a strict routine because of that previous program I was following. I had to switch off my electronics and try to relax and read. But the fact is that I don't really like to read that much. And I always, always watched my favorite, my favorite, you know, shows before, before sleep. I looked forward to it. I loved it. And then I had to stop it and I just hated it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to sleep. I wish I could watch something. <laughs> I thought it was helping me. <laughs> and then right away, I got so excited. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to watch shows tonight and I'm going to go timeless. I'm not going to watch a, a look at the time. I'll just uh, watch the show. I'll be happy. If I feel really sleepy, I'll go to bed and relax. That's what I'll do. And I did that and it really, really helped. Right away, I started sleeping really well. I started getting eight hours, nine hours of sleep. I mean, like seven, it was, you know, still um, not, not ideal, of course. It's impossible to get it perfect right away. But I started getting better, but I still kept on watching your videos. And I still kept on, kept on being obsessed with education. Like it was a new obsession. Uh, I, I read heaps of her books. Uh, I still was thinking about it. And I was excited about all of these learnings. So I would share them with my husband again and he's like you're obsessed about being obsessed and you're obsessed about education you just sleep just forget about it just sleep and he was so annoyed with everything i did <laughs> he's just just forget about it that's all you have to do it's so simple just do it <laughs> but yeah. yeah no i was just gonna comment that it's uh you know it's in a way it's 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 it's, it's I was going to use the word funny, but of course this is, you know, it affects people very deeply. So I don't want to use that word, but I don't know. It's, it's notable. Let's, let's use the word notable that yes, it's so simple in a way. Like your husband is like totally right to just forget about this whole thing and everything will be fine. But then when the brain has gotten this idea yeah. that we're in somehow in some kind of danger, it is not easy to like, sometimes it takes a whole lot of education to do nothing. Right. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It was just to to crack the code. Yeah, understand what's going on, because not knowing what's happening, uh, it's it's just so confusing and frustrating. You just gotta fix it, and you can't stop if you're an obsessive kind of person or you know type A personality. You've just gotta fix it. Um, and um, yeah, for me, it really really helped to understand why anxiety is there when I go to bed because you know I I moved on. I had a great day. I got up early, I was moving around, I exercised and I was happy, I didn't stress at all. And then how, how is it that I go to bed and I'm still anxious? How is it that after a happy day, anxiety is there, you know? So, and just knowing that what it was really, really helped. And so, yeah, I, I've learned all of this and I had a lot of setbacks. I'm not sure if you remember my comments, but I was like commenting heaps and you know, watching your success stories and then asking other other people who, you know, who got over it. I was asking them what they did. 
And I just, for some reason, I just couldn't let go. And I was just frustrating myself that I just couldn't let go on this tight, you know, grip on, on, on this thing. It's not a problem. It's a thing. <laughs> and I just couldn't let go. I don't know. It just might, must be my personality. It's something I've learned about myself that, you know, <laughs> I just obsess too much about things. And yeah, that's very, very, we should definitely, um, talk about this topic a little bit more because it's 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 so helpful because oftentimes people will watch like an episode like this and it can sound like oh nina just like she just uh read the book and watched some videos and then everything was fine it wasn't like it was a bumpy path that we hear and that's so important to for everyone to know but before that um just i just got curious because uh you know the the comments where that led to this episode where i saw your conversation with somebody else from the community there that was a comment on that episode about like this hypnic awareness when you're about to fall asleep and you become aware of falling asleep and then that kind of wakes you up. So was that something that bothered you? Uh, yeah, yeah. When you, it happened a lot when you watch sleep closely, when you really watch the process of falling asleep and I would just really pay attention to it. Um, and as soon as I started, you know, noticing that, oh, I'm relaxing. Oh yeah, I'm falling asleep right away. Uh, you know, I'm up of course. And then I was so annoyed that I woke myself up. I was so annoyed with it. Um, and I would think about why am I annoyed about being annoyed? And then right away, obsessing, analyzing, asking. And then right as you know, when I start, as soon as I start doing that, anxiety kicks in, it's right there. So, you know, heart starts to race and I'm wide awake because of the thoughts that I thought. And, and I'm just, just so annoyed with this reaction because you just want to go and sleep. You know, you know, you don't want to go through all those obstacles, you know, it should be a simple process. And I was annoyed that it wasn't. And so I watched those videos. You have, you have quite a few of them. And I watched them all, of course, because <laughs> I was obsessed. Um, and I realized, yep, again, just do nothing. It's the same answer for everything. And why can't I just do nothing? <laughs> and so, yeah. And then it was funny. One of the, yeah, one of your um, inter yeah, persons you interviewed said that it's, also it's doing nothing but it's not trying to do nothing either like it has to be completely effortless just actually just just oh, nothing and then you sleep just like nothing no efforts whatsoever because there could be effort even in doing nothing when you yeah. do it with, uh, with an intention to achieve something like oh i'm gonna do nothing so i can do this yeah so i can achieve this so that's also wrong so it was just complete nothingness and that's the same with sleep you know, doing nothing and relaxing, not with any intention, because that's what normal sleepers do. They they go to bed and they don't really have any intention, any plan or strategy. They just go to bed and shut their eyes and that's it. This is it. This is literally it. And that, that's what I did my whole life. And um, yeah, it, it's really that simple. It's the same on everything. Yeah. <laughs> hundred percent. Yeah. So well said. And, uh, and I remember that discussion, there was a, a, several in the comment section and we talked about on channel too, that distinction would be like doing nothing as in like, I I'm doing nothing and this still happens versus like, I'm not actually doing anything. There's no effort. It'll, you know, definitely understand. You remember that one. And now, uh, let's, so now we're, you know, you, you found the channel, you read the book, this, you're starting to really understand things. You're sleeping a little bit easier, but it's still like a bumpy road. It, was, it, was it more like um, uh, you slept quite okay for a stretch and then there was kind of a setback or was it more like the still present uh, uh, kind of fear that overall made you feel kind of not, not well? Or what was that, a, yeah. that bumpy path of like? If you will? Oh, yeah, it was, um, it was good. And then as soon as I had a bad night, right away, I started analyzing about why I had it. So I was, um, you know, in the middle of it all rather than, you know, like beyond it. So I was caught up, caught up with it every time. And I just couldn't see it. I just couldn't get out of the whole thing and just see for what it was. So I would just get caught up. And then what really helped at some point, I remember that it was a turning point back then. It has nothing to do with now, but back then it really helped. I realized that it was um, not even the fear of not getting enough sleep, but it was the fear of just, I just don't want any tension when I'm in bed. I just hate let, lying there and I hate the fact that I'm not falling asleep. I just don't like it. I just don't like having racing heart in bed. And so I decided, you know what? I'm not going to stay in bed if there is any tension. 
I'm just not going to do it. If if there's any tension at all, I'll just get up and I'll watch my favorite show. And I, I love I love watching TV. And so just the looking forward to watching something, it was such a big thing. And I was actually excited about going to Ben because I knew that there's no more suffering there. I'll just get up and watch something. And funny enough, I fell asleep the first night and the second night and the third night. And I'd never actually got to watch anything because I kept on falling asleep because I just somehow got into that subconscious fear and I just completely disarmed it. I say, look, I don't fear you because I'll do something I love. So even disarming it with something you really enjoy and not even just not caring, but add to not, not caring and add to that and also enjoying your time. It's like a double weapon and it's great and it works so well. And so I just, knowing that I will watch something and enjoy myself kept putting me to sleep almost every night, maybe like one night a week, I wouldn't. And then I just overcame it. And then I would not even care if I watch anything. I would just go to bed and relax and fall asleep. But then I, I remember that I broke that streak of good night because we went away uh, for a little trip and I never, I didn't, I haven't slept outside of my house yet. Um, and so I had intense anxiety there um, and I started to fight with it. I was laying in bed. I forgot everything I told myself and I was lying in bed and fighting that anxiety and analyzing it and fighting back and, you know, having that struggle, trying to push anxiety back trying to come down. <laughs> it sounds really bad, trying to come down. You can't try to come down. So I would, and I lay, I, lay, I lay there until 5 a.m. and had a bad night and then came home and yeah, right away, the few, I forgot everything I told myself. And so I was kind of back and forth with all that stuff until, until I got so sick of it. I just got, got so sick of, you know, uh, still making it a thing in my life. Uh, it was just back and forth and I got annoyed with myself, you know, and um, of course share it with, my, like I cried to my husband. <laughs> I cried and I was just tired. I was tired of it. And he kept on telling me the same thing. Just, you just think about it. You react to it. Just forget about it. Just forget about it. And I would have anxiety at night and I would tell him how I was annoyed with that too. And he's like, just don't react to anxiety. Give it nothing. Don't analyze it don't analyze it. That, that is it. That is it. And then uh, it just made a lot of sense. And one time I remember that's, that's when I started going forwards and not backwards. One time I just sat with myself and really thought about every single thing I thought and did in the past when I was a really, really good sleeper. And, uh, and I really, really, somehow it just clicked for me. And I really understood that I really didn't do anything at all there was just really nothing and i and i thought you know that i was just oblivious to how i fell asleep i had no idea how much i slept like i i would go to a party and dance until 2 a.m and then i didn't worry that i wouldn't fall asleep after that and so i would fall asleep and all kinds of things i would you know watch a movie like with really bright light in my eyes and i didn't think that it would impact my sleep and just not like I'd have a coffee at 6 p.m. And I would, I would, I was never, and I like, I moved lots of continents, America, Europe, Australia, but I never had any troubles with sleeping. Uh, I would just fall asleep. I don't know. I didn't question it ever. And I thought, what do I do when I go to bed? How did I do that? Like when I went to bed, what did I think? And I really analyzed it. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to copy everything I did in the past. I'm just going to do that. And I thought, yeah, in the past when I went to bed, there was no intentions. There was not even a, a, a word, a, you know, a word, sleep. There was just nothing. I just go to bed and I shut my eyes and I have no idea what happens after that. And that, that, that was it. That's all I ever did. And sometimes I would visualize. Other times I would just, I don't know, do nothing. And then I would relax. But I didn't think, oh, am I going to fall asleep? Or am I falling asleep? Or what should I do? to fall asleep, you know, there was just never such a thing. And I thought, what if I just copy that person from the past? That was me. I'm, I'm the same person. Like I, I'm in the same body. If I could sleep that well back then, why, why would things change now? I'm the same person, the same body. Uh, you know, if I just completely copy every single thing I did without questioning anything, without what ifs, 
without adding anything to it, if I just without any questions copy that identically, why would I not get back to normal? You know, why would it fail if I just copy that and just forget about it? Because I didn't think about it during the day. And so I wouldn't think about it during the day now too. And I decided to, to just copy that. And just one thing that was in the way was that break, that anxiety. And what really, really helped me, that was just one thing to completely get out of the way. That was, um, I really, really liked your interviews with Alina. Uh, really, really liked them, uh, especially that the first one that came out, the, the 50 minute one, it really resonated with me. It was just, um, it really helped because her struggles sound a lot like mine, just heaps of setbacks, always, always having little efforts, always having that, you know, um, subtle, subtle efforts and this idea about sleep that's always in the background. And, um, and then one, yeah, one of her comments, because I, I think I reached out to her and I was so annoyed with my anxiety at that point. And she told me about anxiety that anxiety is just an auto, like, a, you know, a brain on autopilot. It's not something, it's like we didn't do anything wrong. So to have anxiety, sometimes I go to bed and I didn't, don't think about sleep and I still have anxiety, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, why, why is anxiety there? I'm not even thinking about sleep. And that's annoying, you know, that's annoying. And she, and she said, and you said, but that time it just really clicked. It's just an autopilot. It's a silly, automated, subconscious thing that keeps running because there were so many nights in the last year, hundreds of nights, when I was fearful. And every you know, when you're fearful of the same thing every time, every night, of course, the, the brain automates the response to match that fear. So it was just an automated thing. It, it's really that simple. It was it was nothing like and then I then I knew that it was nothing. <laughs> it was just an autopilot. And what's there to, to like, why question it then? Why be afraid of it? What like why analyze it? There is nothing to solve, nothing to analyze. You just understand that it's autopilot, you know, and and when and I decided, you know what, I'll go to bed and I'll just do nothing like I did in the past. And if autopilot kicks in, I'll be kind to it. I'll be friended. I'll be, I'll just get up. I'm not going to force myself to sleep through anxiety because it's not pleasant. And I want to do that to myself. So I'll just get up and do something I enjoy. And I'll, I will allow the brain to notify me of danger. I'll accept it. I'll relax and I'll go back to bed and do, get back to doing nothing. And, and I, and I did that. And, um, we, we traveled for 10 days. Um, we had a really big trip. And I still kept that same thinking. And there was no matter what, no what ifs, nothing to add to it. It was simple. It was a simple formula. <laughs> and, and at that time, I finally had that simplicity. There was no more videos, no more obsessions. And I did that. And um, of course, of course, anxiety was there because it was also different surroundings. So brain, the way brain works is that it detects that there was, detects that there was a big danger in the past when I slept in outside of my home. So it warns me even more. It's it's not my fault. I didn't cause it on myself. It's just an automated cycle, yeah? So of course, right away I have anxiety, but I gently, you know, get up, get out of bed. And I didn't even do anything I enjoyed. I just sat in the other room and sort of hugged myself and just, just relax. And I talked to it. I'm like, that's okay. Yeah, warn me, do whatever you wanna do. You are just an automated subconscious program. You're actually not real. It's just a program. And I would just watch it. And it was such a good good liberation to, to be completely separate from it. So before I was anxious, I was that anxiety. But now there was anxiety. And then there was me. And we were just completely separated. We were, we were on different shores. And I was the one watching it. And when you do that, when you, as they say, shine your consciousness on, on that thought, or on that feeling, with that shine, when shining that consciousness on it, but being aware of it, it just dissipates. It just, it just can't stand in the light of your consciousness. Uh, so, um, and just by being aware, it, it just loses all its power. <clears throat> nothing to um, cling to, nothing to feed on. And it really helped. And it was a matter of just four or five days of doing that consistently. It was maybe one hour of just being aware of anxiety and then going back to bed or something. 
And then, and then I start to sleep well. And then the last five or six days of the trip, I slept fine. And, but I didn't think about it. I woke up and I didn't think, oh, I slept fine. I, I just, because I was coping that version of me from the past. I was coping that identically. And there was no going back because I knew that that was the solution. Just copy that and don't any, add any doubt to it. Um, and then I came back home and um, kept on doing that. And and I started to sleep well. There were a, a few setbacks because I fell into analyzing anxiety again. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait what am I doing? Why am I analyzing this? You know. And my husband was helpful as well. He kept on reminding me. It was funny, like I, I would have racing heart for the whole day and because I, I, you know, I was really obsessed with racing heart. I'm like, how is it still there? How is it still there? It's funny how we keep on falling back into that, uh, you know, uh, trying to fix it. And he's like, I just, it is there. And he would, and he told me it is there because you're obsessed about why it's there. And, and it's like, and it just hit me and right away it stopped and my heart stopped racing and I slept really well that night. And I'm like, what the hell? Why? Why am I like this? But you have you got to be kind to yourself because, uh, yeah, it's just what the brain does, isn't it? Um, Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, it, it, you know, you shared such a an amazing story of like, I, I I almost visualized the the journey from like when you start learning and understanding. Then oftentimes there's like. Um, it's just that my, you hear that ringing, it's just uh, somebody wants to play with my daughter, but my son is gonna tell them that she's not here. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you have a lot of trouble sleeping and then you can do, you can immediately start understanding things, then you do, you, you do better, but then of course there's some residual fear and then, and then you can have trouble sleeping again and then can, you can feel even worse because like I understand and I still have this and then, but then you start understanding again. And so it's almost like, I'm gonna illustrate this here, like let me yeah. go from here to here. It's like the big swings, and then maybe yeah. a little smaller swings and then a little smaller swings and a little, it's kind of like a, a fading like pattern like that, but the, those swings happen very naturally. Like, do, do you feel that like that resonates? It's something like that. Yeah, that. That's exactly it. It's, it's not a continual journey. It's not like healing from some disease where you keep getting better every day, every day until you're good. You know, it's, it's not like getting over cold or something. It's uh, it's really complex because the brain is a complex uh, machine. Or whatever it is um but yeah so it is just like that so really i found that there is no way i just decided there is no way i'm going to react to it i'm done you know i am done i already know that it's an autopilot and when i when i really decide that that i'm just not reacting to it um you know and i go to bed and relax it just happens less and less frequently it's it's only natural you know that the brain would not warn you as much and over time, it happens less and less and less. The main job here is to do nothing and not react to it and keep on doing nothing <laughs> and keep on just pretending it's not there. Oh, also, and um, I, what really helped as well, I, I read an article on, on the internet a few months ago. It was an interview with Sasha Stephens. One woman, um, a, a journalist, she had insomnia and she read about her method and she started practicing it, but was in a similar situation where she just she was still stuck like she was doing better but she was still a little confused about if she should i get out of bed should i do this you know still trying to solve it i'm and wondering then, if I, i'm gonna just interrupt you real quick just because maybe the same article i read is it uh, the one where the journalist happens to live in the same town and she goes yes, to visit yes. yeah that one. Oh yeah let's go and on so, yeah yeah that's interesting and then sasha comes into her house and the woman is like, I just wanted to look her in the eye and really ask her if she really sleeps eight to nine hours every night. <laughs> and then Sasha comes and sips on coffee at 5 p.m., which was concerning, which was confusing to the woman. And the woman asks her and and I just and I screenshotted that what Sasha replied. And I just kept on getting back to it every time I had a sad bag. And Sasha replied to her, you are think you're still thinking too much about sleep you are still paying too much attention to it just by having me here talk, you know, by having, by talking to me, you are already better. You already had a, like a, a full night of sleep a few times. So you, you know that you can, your body can do it. You are already better. And she said, and that's what I screenshotted that when I got to your stage of having um, a few full good nights of sleep, I just did one last thing. 
I paid absolutely no attention to it whatsoever. I just pretended it was not there. <laughs> and it's just like, it's, it, could, it could even be a game, you know, just pretending and living this other life where you think it's not there. And it's like, oh, it's gone. And then you just pretend in the day, pretend it's not there. And at night you go to bed and you pretend it's not there. And it's great when it could, it could turn into this fake it till you make it kind of process, which is fun. And then, and then she kept on saying that, you know, uh, body has, that, that's also what helped me knowing that uh, body has self-regulating mechanisms. It always does. Things always self-regulates, you know, I think the body always seeks homeostasis. It always wants to go back to normal. It always does, even with disease. And the only thing that gets back in the way with, with sleep is, you know, you're still thinking about it. You're still holding on to it. Just let go and just allow it to self-regulate at its own pace. And so, and then, and then she said to a woman that if today you forgot that you ever had a sleep problem, you would go to bed and sleep for eight hours every day until the rest of your life. If the whole, all of those memories, thoughts and labels and emotions were gone out of our brains, we would just start, start sleeping, you know? And so I thought, what if I just, just stop it all? What if I just erase it? What if I just pretend? What if I do nothing? And then I just, I did all that. Uh, like I, I went to bed and I didn't even tell myself, you know what, if I don't sleep tonight, I'm going to watch this. Because uh, that's, that's what I used to tell him my, to myself in the past to eliminate the fee. And it helped, it was coming. But this time I just really pretended it wasn't there. Like I would go back, I would go to bed and be the me from like five years ago or something. I would just think nothing. I would just let my thoughts drift. Um, yeah, and that, that really helped. So, um, and uh, I, I realized along the way how, how funny it is, how we believe our thoughts so much. You know, you, I know that you are into like Zen and meditation and all that. And that's, um, that I came to this amazing realization that really helped me with, eliminating a lot of other obsessions in life because a lot of like a lot of problems a lot of suffering is from our labels that we give to that situation and I started to read about that I read um not sure if you've heard of it the power of now uh, that's yeah I've read it yeah yeah so powerful just just being completely separate from the mind like if if any if any of us this is in every single one of us if we just sit down for, for a little bit and study to and start and if we start to listen to our minds and don't reply to them and don't engage with them if we really do it for a long time it's and then you come to realization oh if, you know if I can observe the mind and listen to it and if I'm not affected by its thoughts then am I am I the mind or am I the one aware of the mind and when you realize that you understand that Really, if you really, you know, um, become that person who's aware of the mind and not the mind, you can become invincible and like things, the, things don't get, get to you because um, suffering is not, there is no, like suffering is something that's in the mind. It's never in the situation in life, isn't it? That's why you see two people in the same circumstances, but one is okay, one is happy, another one suffers and is depressed. And it's all it's all about our thoughts about the situation. So if there is no negative thoughts about something, no matter what the situation is, there is no suffering and it's nothing. So <laughs> that was just so helpful. And this insomnia was a big thing for me because it helped me to... Um, not obsess about many other things and as a result you you just become like just i don't know just nothing gets to you because you don't label things with oh this is a problem and now i'm going to suffer because of this problem pro 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 uh, sorry problem and um wow just having that power of a mind and being completely separate from it it's amazing isn't it <laughs> no it is and it's uh oh my gosh it's uh, you know you you may have heard me talk about this but I'm always sort of hopeful that uh, you know what we talk about with insomnia uh, will will lead someone in exactly that direction to see that what you can learn from insomnia can lead you to a place where you you, you come across these like deep like fundamental universal truths that are like in for example the power now and it's so it's so fascinating when you start seeing it that way that like 
what we think of as re reality isn't really important. It's kind of how we interpret reality that matters, how we think of it. And then if we're just like observing our thoughts, then yeah. then we we really are outside of the suffering, which which again, yeah. like even if, you know, I think I've seen this, you've seen this, and that doesn't mean that, I mean, sometimes I catastrophize and I'm anxious and I'm stressed and all that, but it really doesn't bother you so much. And, yeah. and I, I don't know if you've, I think of this one too, but sometimes you can be in a state of like there is suffering, but it doesn't bother you so much. It's kind of like you're yeah. seeing that it's happening rather than being part of it, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, because there's always problems, like there's always situations that are negative in the external world. But you know, our, our response has a lot to do with it. And then people, often people, that's just the way it is. Our parents teach us, teach us this, and that's what we feel people are like. We absorb it as kids, unfortunately. We you know, we react to things negatively. And when we do, we get, we want to fight that fear that we have developed in ourselves. So it gets, it's double suffering. You know, first it's the thoughts that are negative. And then I don't like those thoughts. And then I want to struggle with those thoughts. And then the result of those thoughts is um, emotion, which is energy in motion, which is energy of those thoughts that you can feel in the body. And then I don't like that either. And I want to fight that too. And then you fight the problem, the thoughts, and the emotion, and you just suffer. You just suffer so much. <laughs> but I, I found that also another thing. Have you, I'm not sure if you've heard of the Sedona method. No, never. Um, it's an amazing technique to just emotional freedom, where you you just let go of any emotion that holds you back. So people with depressions, they just let go of it in a matter of days. Uh, and people with all kinds of things, uh, often with um. With life situations, uh, you know, when you have a very intense emotion around something, uh, somehow you hold that problem, re you know, in reality. You energize it and it, it manifests in reality. So um, when we remove energy from something, you know, we're very often people get so tired and so sick, they just surrender. They just surrender and they just stop fighting. And right away, the problem resolves. Yeah. Uh, it often happens like that. So it's a lot about this strong energy we have around things, around insomnia. You know, there's a lot of energy around it for people who struggle. And when you just remove the the energy, it just can't stand. It can't stand uh, because nothing energizes it. And same with with many other things in life. So it's and the Sedona method is about just um, about this way of complete of, of successfully dealing with emotions where you don't suppress it. You don't, um, um, you know, um, like you don't, um, you know, I don't know how to say that. Sorry, like you don't pour out the emotion. You, you don't um, express it. Sorry, yeah, express it. Uh, but it's about just welcoming the emotion. Just like with with this anxiety related to sleep, we we don't want to fight it. Like we don't want to make it an enemy. It's horrible. It's when we suffer a lot and it intens intensifies. So we want to welcome it. Um, and then when you welcome it and you can even sense it in your body somehow, you can feel it at some point, you know, when you really welcome it with, with, um, with gentleness and with love and you just say, it, say to that emotion, whatever it is, you know what, I allow you to be here, move through me, be there. Uh, I'm not fighting you. I'm, I'm not reacting to you. I, I love you. I don't judge you anymore. You're just an emotion. And just by welcoming emotions, it's funny how it works by, by just allowing them to be there rather than fighting that sadness, fighting that depression, fighting that anger or frustration, but just sitting with it and allowing it to be there. It just moves out of you and it moves through you and it disappears just like with yes. thoughts. When we sit with them and we observe them and don't get engaged with them, they just go yeah. and they mean nothing. So, and that, that was a, a huge thing as well, you know, to like, this insomnia thing led me to a lot of realizations about life and, uh, it's amazing, really, that there's really we are. Yeah, we can we choose if we want to suffer or not, and we choose to be happy or not. So it's it's all it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> no, absolutely. And I don't know if you saw that movie episode because by the time I, I recorded that one, you, you you probably were doing better already. But I, I made this um, video called like uh, the evolution of NATO, where I talk about how now I see it as like. You know, at first I saw it as like, okay, somebody has trouble sleeping and I can help that person solve that problem and that's all good. To now think of it more as like every anybody who comes to me and says like I have trouble sleeping, that's like, 
okay, we have like an entry point here. We have something that we can use so that you can learn about yourself, you can learn about the mind, yeah. and that can become something that leads you to so much more. And like, it can be a yeah. gift, it can be something that helps you so much in life. And, yes. and your story kind of is the embodiment yeah. of that, you know? I'm honestly happy I've had that insomnia because, you know, once you know all of these things, there's no going back, then you just know it. And why would you choose to suffer? If, if you learned this, it could be life changing. Like, uh, I'm not going to live the rest of my life with the knowledge I had from before insomnia because I used to be a negative person. Um, so why would I go back to that if I know the truth that it's it's easy? It's always a choice. Even uh, it also helped me to deal with um, someone asked me in, in that comment about fatigue um, during the day when you yeah. had a really rough night of sleep. Even that is a choice. It's a choice to get up and be exhausted and just be run down and miserable. Or, you know, the body is really, the, people call the body the, like, um, the, the reflection of the mind. So people with a lot of diseases or those who are like, are really sick, it's because, a lot of the times it's because of thoughts that they've had chronically bad thoughts for a long time and it manifests in disease. And then you see people who are really happy and upbeat and they rarely get sick, like they're really healthy and they have lots of energy and really so the body is at our command you know it will do whatever you think if you think sad thoughts negative thoughts um frustration it manifests in the body and it's exhausted it feels heavy and you know when you're happy your body feels light it's just natural and it feels natural because happiness is a normal state of being and it's always there when we stop thinking negative things and it's there it's always there yeah. <laughs> we just have unpeel those layers of negativity and i so think yeah I, I, I think it's it's so true what you say specifically here about like the fatigue that it, it, it really is sort of like an emotion it comes from our thoughts and like the tricky yeah. thing of course is that i mean the whole paradox to me is that thing about like when somebody hears that they can be like how do i stop thinking negative things well it's <laughs> really all about like the paradox of it is like well if you allow negative things thoughts to happen then they actually go away yes so it's kind of tricky it. right but i think that's it and now yeah. I want to like maybe um, we we have already talked an hour, which is uh, it doesn't, oh, yeah. sure it doesn't feel like it, but it was oh. so much value here. But yeah, I guess maybe a last comment from my end was this one about like um, you know I often have clients who are like uh, feel like maybe they've gone kind of up and down, or maybe it's been a real struggle and things feel kind of hopeless, and they're like you know I I feel like I feel like just giving up, mm. and to me it's like that means you're this close to doing really well, like. Yeah. You know, <laughs> is the thing that's going to help you right because giving up is like letting go and letting go is like releasing and when you release it's gone isn't it yeah. so it's probably and, and, which by the way you know i have to read up about the sedona method but i i so see it that way too and uh, like it here it was described as an energy and you know going back to sasha stevens she was like one of the things she said when i talked to her that it will is like i'll never forget is like there's nothing there like there's yeah. nothing there <laughs> which is like insomnia is not something actually that it cannot exist unless you yeah. you, you you try you fight or you do something you yes. analyze you try right and if you, if you don't do that it's like there is nothing yeah. there yeah actually, yeah right? yeah <laughs> totally totally so it just really makes it empty for you when you realize like for me when when i started to read about thoughts and how we are not our thoughts and we're not our emotions and I thought, you know, with insomnia, it's really just a product of the mind. It, the, insomnia exists in the form of thoughts and memories and beliefs. Beliefs are thoughts. So if there is no thoughts, no beliefs, if I forget about the memories or just let them go when they come up. So if I just, if I remove all that, then how can insomnia stand? Yes. How can it exist? If thoughts don't hold it, because if it exists in thoughts, if there's no thoughts, it's gone. So <laughs> I thought, I'll just stop thinking about it. Why would I hold on to it? It's so easy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's uh, this. We should kind of a perfect place to end this. Like it's, it, it really, in a way, is that easy. Everyone out there, it is that easy. Well, it's not easy to get there because you have. It is a journey, but at the end of it, that is where you where you end up. So, yeah, I want to say this was this was amazing. You know, so much value. I, I, and and by the way, um, uh, I'll I'll send you an email when I post this. It's, probably going to be in a few days but be, i'm sure there's going to be several people commenting so if you have time and feel like if you can answer some comments and uh 
we, with that said, yeah, I just want to say thanks so much for coming on. And it was really, really amazing to have you. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, thank you so much, Daniel. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Stay in touch, okay? Yeah, bye.